Hello, and welcome to the next in my series of Tyranid Fluff narratives. This time we're going to be focusing on High Fleet Gorgon versus the Tau and Imperial Guard. The Gorgon. Kraken was not the only High Fleet to plague the galaxy in the wake of Behemoth. Several smaller fleets were also slinking their tendrils into the eastern fringe, and though they only lightly encroached upon the Imperium's domain, the emergent Tau Empire was not so lucky, and soon found itself fighting a war against extinction itself. High Fleet Gorgon, like numerous other Tyranid fleets, including Naga, Chimera, and Scarabus was first thought to be a splintered tendril of Behemoth, and not a high fleet in its own right. Even so, such a distinction is only significant if one forgets that all of the Tyranids are ultimately under the direction of one omnipresent sentience. The Hive Mind was testing the defenses of the galaxy, probing for a weakness it could exploit, and seeking new races to devour. During its search, it had tasted the flesh of Tau, and now it hungered for more. The Tau were the first alerted to the oncoming Hive Fleet when several outlying trading planets went mysteriously silent. Soon, a handful of refugee ships escaped to bring word of the alien horrors that had devoured their world. All attempts to establish peaceful conflict with the contact with the Tyranids met with bloody disaster, and the Tau Firecast finally responded by deploying numerous warrior cadres to halt the onslaught. Despite its relatively small size, High Fleet Gorgon posed a dire threat to the unsuspecting Tau. Gorgon still possessed ships enough to overwhelm the Tau space, fleets patrolling the borders of their territory, and could unleash untold waves of Tyranid warrior organisms to overrun a planet. It was not because of its numbers, though, that High Fleet Gorgon would prove so dangerous. More than any high fleet encountered before or since, Gorgon possessed an ability to rapidly adapt to new circumstances on a biological level, emerging from every battle with every new clutch of organisms perfectly suited to overcome the foe that had defeated their predecessors. It would come to define the very nature of the war against the Tau. Adapt or die. Flesh against technology. The Tau chose to draw the line on the first world of Shah Dryag. Other outlying colonies were simply evacuated as the shadow of Gorgon loomed, abandoned so that the Tau could concentrate their forces instead of overextending themselves across dozens of worlds against a numerically superior foe. The Tyranids' first assault on Shah Dreag was an overwhelming failure. The Tau patiently waited for the rampaging hordes to close within optimum firing range, before felling hundreds with every volley of their pulse rifles. The few large Tyranid organisms that lumbered forward were systematically felled as the Tau battle tanks engaged them at extreme range, sniping the monsters with pinpoint ion cannon fire before they ever got within range to use their monstrous claws. A few Tyranid organisms managed to weather the storm of plasma fire, but even these ran headlong into the waiting guns of Tau battle suits, their bodies blown apart as they were targeted by multiple heavy weapon systems. In their naivete, the Tau believed their technology was proof against anything the Tyranids could throw at them. 
Then another wave of attackers reached the surface of the heavily forested planet. In response to the powerful rifles of the Tau, High Fleet Gorgon restructured its warriors' carapaces to better absorb plasma bursts. The weapons that had proved so murderous were robbed of their efficacy. When one shot had slain a termagant or hormagant before, two or three hits were now required to fell a foe. Worse, towering monsters with giant biocannons cradled in their fused limbs on their backs now stalked the landscape. Hunting Tau tanks at extreme range and blasting apart the broadside battlesuits that stood sentinel over the beleaguered Tau. In desperation, the Tau fell back under the covering fire of their Kroot allies, whose solid shot sniper rounds still proved effective. Protected by the cover of the forest, the Kroot were able to keep the Tyranids from getting to grips with them, and their sharp-eyed marksmen slowed the advance of the swarm. But then, the hive mind unleashed a new wave of creatures, bloated beasts whose dorsal weapons spurted gouts of flame to burn their prey from their wooded sanctuary. Beside them came lithe, snake-like creatures to whom the tangled undergrowth of the forest was no hindrance. They darted between boughs to pounce on survivors, tearing them apart in the blink of an eye. The Kroot died in their thousands, but their sacrifice brought the Tau enough time to regroup and refit their battle suits. The Tau began to equip their squads with prototype missile pods, and experimental rail rifle weaponry, ballistics that the Tyranid had not encountered before. The war shifted again in the Tau's favor. As these new weapons carved furrows into the Tyranid's ranks, and though hard fought and bloody, the second assault was ultimately thwarted. Gorgon proved an implacable, implacable foe, though, and with its second defeat, the cycle of adaptation began anew. When the Tyranids next swarmed across Shah Dryag's surface, the hive mind had spawned gangrel creatures to flit in the midst of its swarm, emitting thick clouds of choking spores that masked the horde's approach. Plasma and solid shot alike were useless when no target could be seen, and only the missiles of retrofitted broadside battle suits worked with any efficacy in the obscuring gloom. Their barrages saturated large areas, and every explosion blasted scores of tyranids to ash. Soon, however, the ground beneath the broadside's feet rumbled before tunneling Molochs burst from below to swallow them whole. The Tau were now too few to make an effective stand, and with a heavy heart they abandoned Shah Dryag to the Gorgon and fell back to the sept world of Ke El Shan. Flight to Ke El Shan. Though the Tau fleet was pursued by dozens of bioships, only a handful of cadre vessels were boarded and destroyed before the Tau successfully punched through the Tyranid blockade. Unaffected by the shadow in the warp, the Tau's ZFR horizon drives propelled their ships at near light speed through real space and arrived safely at Kel El Shan. It took the Tyranid many days to transverse the same span of space, and for the first time in months, the Tau hoped to have a chance to catch their breath and recuperate. However, upon arriving at Kel El Shan, 
the Tao find the Sept world embroiled in a war against the Imperium of Man. With no time to waste, the Tau fleet fell upon the interlopers, but the Imperium's task force was no mere raiding party. A dozen Imperial Guard regiments of the famed Cadian 18th were already dug in on the planet's surface and determined to claim the world in the name of the Emperor. Battle raged for three full days, and all the while, High Fleet Gorgon came ever closer. Strange Alliances It was the Imperium's forces who first detected the Tyranids entering the Kel Elshan system. The mad babblings of Cadian's Primaris Psyker alerted them to the approaching danger. Faced with a common enemy, the Imperium Guard finally listened to the Tau's calls for a ceasefire and agreed upon an uneasy truth, truce. For one of the few times in recorded history, Imperial Guardsmen and Tau Fire Warriors stood, if not shoulder to shoulder, then at least as brothers in arms against the Tyranids. Acting in concert, the Imperial and Tau fleets cut deep into Gorgon's vanguard. Though casualties were heavy, the Allies destroyed a majority of the bio ships, severely reducing the Tyranids' reproductive capability. The few remaining bio ships fled the system after deploying their swarms to Ke Elshan's surface, but the Tau pursued, determined to end the threat forever. Meanwhile, on the surface, the Allied forces held the line against the Tyranid's horde. Three Imperial Guard regiments and two Tau cadres were overrun in the initial onslaught. But the desperate weapons and the tactics employed by the Allies prevented the rapid adaptation that had plagued the Tau on Shah Dryag. Slowly, the Allies' guns drove the swarm back, and during the Battle of World Spine Ridge, the last hive tyrant was slain, leaving the leaderless beasts to be purged with relative ease. Though the alliance with the Cadians ended soon after, Hive Fleet Gorgon was defeated. And that is the story of Tau against the Tyranid. I hope you enjoyed it, and look forward to my next fluff narrative. Until then, I'll see you next time.